November 2021, 27-year-old Nelson Neke joined other graduates in Kogi State for the National Youth Service. He was posted to St. John's Hospital, Kaba, where he worked as a medical doctor. A few months after his arrival, an explosion rocked the community, resulting in loss of lives. Some of the victims who were rushed to the hospital, he recalled, would have lived if there was a blood bank in any of the hospitals in Kaba. We are bleeding and the challenge was that there was no there is no blood bank in the whole of Kaba hospital. So I had lots of sympathizers, people coming around. The, 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 there were more than 200 people that came that day, but people refused to donate. But that was not all. The hospital also needed infant incubators to increase the survivor chance of preterm babies. They usually come late at night and I was met with a sick preterm. She was born prematurely and there was nothing we could do. We, are, we had to repair to FMC local job because that's the nearest place we could get it. And most times they don't go there because it's, the distance is far and then financially. He took a leap of faith and began to send proposals to members of the community. For months, it seemed like a mission impossible until September when the expected money began to trickle in from individuals and groups. He was able to provide two new NATA incubators and a blood bank refrigerator to the hospital. To commission the life-saving incubating devices, two in number, that have been done by our son, Dr. Nelson Victor, the Holy Spirit. Look at the whole of Kaba, as it was mentioned, no incubator anywhere. The Nata incubator, none anyway. No blood bank, except one private person in the town. Even General Hospital, that of the government service, is not having. They come here now to think for this thing that, okay, our land you have blood bank, now can we just get blood there? It's a conscious effort by somebody who is highly patriotic in serving not only his nation, but by extension, this community. He's commended as one of the best core members in camp. And after camp, we are sustained that, that is not only an excellent core member in camp, even in his place of primary assignment. On behalf of all the core member, we want to congratulate him for bringing and taking Kababunu community to another level. I'm Dr. Nelson Victor, and I'm 28 years from Mavia State. I'm finished from Enrico State in the face of Center Technology in 2019. And um, I just passed out from the NYC. I sat um, in Kogi State, Kaba Bono, the government presiding. When I started, I didn't know how to get the money because it's over 3.2 million naira. And um, I didn't know how to go. And one of the driving forces to make sure that the project is community driven. So when I started, I had to encourage myself. One thing I've learned in CMD is that if a project is God's project, he will sponsor it. From my own personal experiences of how God provides for his project, I knew he would provide, and he did. One, I'm a doctor, and um, it's very disturbing and discouraging for a doctor to see a patient come around and there's really nothing you could do about it because of basic things. Um, let me start from the blood bank. May 11th or so, there was a bomb blast in Kaba. People died and very various kinds of injuries. And then um, they came around and they were brought to my hospital where I worked. <laughs> Seeing patients bleed literally to death was really disturbing. You know, before now we've been seeing cases, you know, chronic anemia and acute anemia and then you call one or two people and you come around to donate. But at that point we, we had like um, five to seven patients all bleeding and they needed, you know, transfusion urgently. And there was no hospital in Kappa with a blood bank. And even though we had lots of sympathizers come around, uh, people obviously, people didn't agreed to, you know, to donate for several reasons best known to them. So it was a very, very big challenge. I, I still insist that probably if we had um, blood, some people who died wouldn't have died. So that was a passion on my side that such things shouldn't happen again. So 
I had to take it up and met the management and others to get that. And then this passion, uh, or passion, it, I will, it can be dated back to my my days as a student. You know, um, I'll say everything started from CMD in Nigeria. I joined CMD in, when I was in my first year, that was in 2012, as a class coordinator. And you know, in our CMD vision, we have we we like reciting it that God made man spiritual and body. And as scholars in the medical professions, we proficient, pretty proficient we care for the whole man. And hence, CMD, um, Christian Medical Dental Association of Nigeria seeks to establish a witness through doctors and students in every community and beyond. So, um, going to that community, I saw it as an opportunity to be a witness in that community. And that was driving for that was a passion and for, uh, for what I eventually did. Getting that money was a very big challenge. You know, I, I said before that my, my experience with God is if it's God's project, He funds it. So I also believe that if it's not God's project, if it's, if it's really not God's project, and maybe just my passion for my own personal things that, that, that drove this, He won't fund it. So an indigenous of Kaba that, that stays outside Lagos, yes, he said in Lagos. So I contacted him and then he gave me the list of people to contact within Nigeria. He told me to add them to a WhatsApp group, which I did and explain and um, explain what I want to achieve in the community and, and, and which I, I, I opened the WhatsApp group, I added them and for the for the next um, when I did for the next 10 minutes or so. I, I, I was just saying this person left the page, this person left the page. I was so discouraged. I had, I had to log out because I felt that was my hope for to, to get in this front. And the people that I was assured could help me, you were leaving the page. So I, I didn't know what to do. Then I left. Then later in the night, I went back and I saw one message that, well done, Dr. Victor. Let's see what we can do about this. And I can say that. This money you are seeing was, was raised by very few people and I don't know any of them. I have not met them till today. I don't know where they are from. They, they all decided to remain anonymous. I was very excited after a few weeks of thinking about it. I called a very good friend, a senior friend, a doctor, and I told him what I was about to do and that what they said I will benefit from it. And I was like, just stop that. No, no. If if you do this for personal gains, you won't achieve it. And that was when I had to retrace my step. And I I and I, I, I had to myself that this is not about you. This is not about and at, at that point I didn't know how I'll get the money. So if it's about me, then I would have you know gone beyond to get the money. I don't know how I would have done it, but I took that advice and I sat down and I told God that God is your project and if you really want to fund it, you do it in your way. And even when the money wasn't coming as I expected, I was, I was not too discouraged because <laughs> it's God's project, not my project. If God really wanted it to come to pass, then he will make provision. So initially it was, it's, the, the first few weeks, I was very um, you know, active about it. I was very personal about it. But when I handed it over to God, and then I I stopped, I stepped back, and I I felt the truth that I, I I hardly prayed about it. I hardly prayed. About it. I just felt it's 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 costing. He was he should handle it, and then he did. So it's not it's it it was driven from a point of passion, and of course information. But what sustained it and what really what made it to come to pass? was purely God's purpose for that community and he did it. So I tell my younger um, colleagues that whatever I am today, I owe to CMD Nigeria. I was involved in CMD as a student, you know, making little, little contributions in classes, in the school, in communities, even as, you know, all those things. And 
I never knew that those things were seeds that were planted in me. So when I came to this community, it was, it was very easy to see the need. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it was easy to see the need. You know, if, if you are not prepared for something and you bumped into a challenge, you know, you, you were very um, overwhelmed with it. But then, same day over these years, they've, they've, they've trained me and others to be proactive. I don't know why it's the right word to use. To, to look out for needs of the com of, of community. I just told you about our vision to be a witness in every community and beyond. So it was easy to really look out for those needs. And then the passion, the vision came from within. It was already there, so it came from within, from the trainings of CMD. So I, I owe everything to, to CMD for, for what God did through CMD to me. passionate about youth and teenagers also. So um, there are a few times I went to schools because I did it as a student. So we went to school, we talked to, we talked to them about, you know, about life, about career purpose, about social vices and the rest. People are so passionate about themselves that they forget that they live in communities, they live in society, that they are first Christians, even before, you know, doing everything. They are first Christians and then we have to be Christ-like. You know, if if we all decide to to gather the whole money to do everything, we'll, we'll, we'll just be like any other human being. But those little, little things that we do that makes us, you know, distinguished, that makes us outstanding, that is what people look out for. It's not really about the number of time you go to church, it's not about the number of the most scriptures you can quote, it's about how you can affect your neighbor, you know, and all those things. And I think that we have to go back to um, being human, being Christian, and not just being ourselves, you know, our kings. If we do that, we'll be happy with ourselves and God will be happy with us. I'm going full time to community health. In fact, I, I am about starting residency in community health. I'm very particular about health policy, about leadership and management. And my intention is that in the next future that I'll be um, a health leader and probably manage firms and even probably nations and big enterprise on how to see how we can, you know, make policies that won't that won't only favor the the highs, you know, that will also go down and see how we could reach out to those people in the villages. And so policies and health leadership and health management. And I'm really hoping that God gives me the privilege to champion this platform, this pathway. And that's what I have in mind. So community service, that is what I'm going to. Yes. Thank you.